Okay, so I have understitched my bodice, and there is a certain point that you're going to get to, and it's right in that hump, that curve I told you about earlier, that you will not be able to, um, well, you can, it's just going to be very, very, you know, tight space. Um, it's going to be very difficult if you attempt to understitch right up in there, okay? But basically what you're doing, like I said, you're going to open this up flat, you're going to push your seam allowance over to the right side, and you're going to stitch right up next to the seam allowance. You can see that? Okay. Now it's not going to be perfect all the way down, just like I'm sure mine is not perfect in certain spots here and there. Um, but when you put it on the sewing machine, this is where you put the seam. If I get really close here, it'll be hard to see at some point. Yeah, let me move this. Hold on just a second. Okay, this may work out better. This is where you're going to put the center seam here. You are going to look at your presser foot, okay? You are going to put the center seam right up against, you see you have this little curve in here, right up against the little wall here of this curve, okay? So, okay, let's look at the center seam here. You are going to put the center seam right there, if you can see that. That better. Yeah, I know it's very hard to see all you or hard to see um, because it's white on white, of course. Um, let's see if you can lean this way and see it a little better. Yeah, you can just barely see it, but if you can understand what I'm saying, um, you are going to put your seam right up against this side here. And here it is. If you could see it, you could see that it's it's right here. Okay, and so that when you sew it, you get this seam allowance that's really, really close. This is probably about an eighth or even maybe even close to being a sixteenth away from that edge. But what it causes the fabric to do is, for instance, let me zoom out here. When you go to put the fabric together and try to match it on the ends, it causes it to basically kind of buckle a little bit and you have this funniness. So if you make it flat, you will see that it causes the fabric to kind of come over that edge. Come on camera. You can get more clear than that. Oh well. Let's go here. Maybe you can see it better here. Okay, but it causes the fabric to kind of come above this edge here. Sort of like that, if you can see that. Okay. And it's even though it's minuscule, um, it gives a more professional look to the fabric or to whatever you're designing because um, it allows it to kind of hide the seam almost in a way. And so you get this slight look of perfection on the outside. I'll move this again. You get this slight look of perfection on the outside because you can't see the seam that helped create the look. Okay? Just like this, it almost looks like this has been sewn to the back of this piece of fabric rather than inside the seam. Okay? And so it just gives it a more professional look. It makes it look a lot nicer, a lot better. Um, go ahead and press that so that looks nice. Um, I'm not going to press mine just because I'm trying to, you know, do you good on time. Um, and then if you can't, if you feel uncomfortable going in this curve here, let me zoom out some. If you feel uncomfortable when you're trying to understitch in this curve here, just take the, you know, lift your presser foot up or whatever, snip your thread. Of course, backstitch. Please backstitch. Um, and then stop right there and then come on the other side and just make sure this time you push your seam allowance over to the left so it'll still be going the same direction. And then you'll just 
so down this side. Now this time, what you're going to do if you're using your sewing machine again, of course you should be, um, you're going to put the center seam against the other side of the little opening. So that way it's going to sew it up nicely. Now if you notice, in this corner, it's getting kind of crazy in there. So we're going to open this up. It's like we're doing surgery, right? We're going to go on the inside, and you should see something like this. If you look closely, there's like this overlapping of fabric right there. We are actually going to snip that out, because that is what is keeping this curve from laying flat, like it should be. So I just snipped it a little bit. Do not snip your seam, oh dear heaven. So you can see it snipped right there. You can kind of see where it folded this little angle on here. So I'm going to actually go in and just snip all of that out. Okay. Let's see if that's a little bit better. Okay, yeah, that is a little bit better. It looks a lot better now that the curve kind of fills out more. And then once you go in, just press it, and that'll give you this shape that you want it. Because it should be the same shape as the seam allowance that you originally saw. Then, after you do that, just go through and pin everything so that the fabric lays flat. Uh, match up your center. Uh, zoom out, Chris, zoom out. Match up your center here. Pin it. And obviously make the fabric lay flat. Your edges may not perfectly meet now because we've understitched it. And that's okay because that will give us that professional looking rollover that we were talking about just a second ago. Okay, then all you need to do is go through and just sew um, probably about a quarter, if not, you know, less or more, just a little bit more. Sew all around the edge of this fabric or of this piece. So it's going to be this remaining edge that's still open. And sew up this side. Too. Okay, so I've gone through and I've sewn the two pieces together just along the bottom edge here. And this whole top edge is the edge that we sewed together and it has the straps on it and all the other stuff. So I'm going to take this piece and throw it over my chair or whatever and move it out of the way. Because I don't need that right now. Pardon me. So anyway, um, so now we're going to take the other two pieces that we haven't been messing with. Um, and it should just be two front bodice pieces that you should have. Okay. Um, then we're going to take them and we're really, these next couple of steps are going to be easy so I'm not going to go through all of it. Um, I'm just going to come back after I've sewn it all together. Um, but you should basically redo the past couple steps all on this one piece. Okay. So you are going to be sewing this top edge together. So you're going to sew it there, flip it inside out, you're going to edge stitch that same top line, and then this time when you um, sew the pieces together here on the bottom, you're just going to sew along this line and here. Uh huh. And then you're going to stop leaving this edge open. Okay. Now really you could sew that edge too, but I don't know, for some reason they didn't show that on here. So I'm not going to do it, just in case there's some magical reason that I didn't think of. No, never mind. It's here on this other little illustration, so yeah. So just sew along that whole entire bottom edge. Once you do the sewing up here and the flipping and the top stitching or the, you know, under stitching and then the snipping of this inner corner. And then once you do all that and everything's folded to the right side, then you can come down here and stitch the pieces together there. Okay. Okay, so now you should be done with both of your pieces. So this is a piece that I just did. If you press everything down, it's fine. Oh, look. There's my phone ringing. It's my mama calling. Anyway, um, now you should be done with both of those, and we're going to pleat it.